Hi guys, it's Pygmy here again. Um, I don't know if there's like sound in the back background because it's, like, it's hot as fuck in my room. It's like 100 degrees. And there's nothing I can do about it. Like, I swear, like, I tried opening the windows. I tried turning on the fan. I tried doing everything, right? It just seems that the weather is so hot out here that, um, like, I live on the second floor of my parents house right and it just seems that the hot air always rises anyway I'm, I'm rambling but I just want to talk about how you know the whole you will own nothing and be happy meme like it's it's already here especially with the rise of rent and the stagnating wages right like how the fuck are you supposed to afford a one room studio which will charge you 1800 a month the only places they're hiring right now are the Taco Bell and the local um supermarket right like the the opportunity just isn't there for sub five guys i literally have two degrees i did um both a meme degree and uh a stem degree right and i have a lot of internship experience yet i can't even get the most basic job and at this point like i've done a bunch of interviews and the only thing i was able to get was um working at some fast food place next and i'm going to be working next to people that dropped out of high school wearing a pathetic humiliating uniform and i'm probably going to be wearing some pathetic name tag with my name on it and a hat with um the restaurant's logo right that's what i'm assuming that and this is why i'm saying that your skills don't really matter right like i literally know people i know someone who did a fucking um, psychology degree, one of the most useless degrees that you can get, no offense to people that got, um, a psychology degree, yet he was able to just get, um, an accounts payable job through one of his friends, his dad's friends, right? With zero experience, like, I remember he was working at these fast food places, so he went from minimum wage to an actual career with him basically doing nothing to prepare for his future, right? Like, I did everything I could. I tried getting as many internships as I could. I tried um, participating with as many career-related um, programs that I could. I tried honing all these different skills to make myself more valuable to a prospective uh, employer. Yet, I'm just left to sit here doing these manual labor jobs while my skills and my education withers away, right? Because I'm not using them. I remember sitting down with this guy and I mean this was, I think this was like my sophomore year in college and we were discussing what our future career um, goals are, right? And he just said, oh I'm just, uh, I'm just working at these fast food places. I have no idea what I want to do and I have no plan to um, to get a job and whatnot, right? And, you know, like, he told me the only reason he's doing these minimum wage jobs is to fund his party habits, right? And he said he regretted his party habits and he really didn't see um, a specific future, right? And, I mean, this guy isn't rich either, right? It's just that, I mean, I would say my parents are better off, but they're just unwilling to help me. So, like, he just went from having no plan whatsoever for moving out and um, furthering his life in any way to just being handed this opportunity where he could just start a white collar job off the back off the bat right that's why I'm saying internships don't matter your degree doesn't matter all that matters is having the minimum requirement to take a job plus the connections you know like based on that he could just get a full salary job with an adult wage. Meanwhile, I'm here with all of this education and all of this, this experience and I'm just going to be paid a mixed slave wage, right? Like all you're going to, all you can afford with a mixed slave wage is to be homeless, right? Or like live in your car. Like that's all that a mixed slave's mick wage is going to give you. Absolutely nothing. Or at least nothing that matters. Like what, what do you, what do kids buy these days? What like, new computers, Xboxes, like, you're not going to be able to buy a house, own your own home, or even pay rent with these low wages, these tiny paychecks. Like, I swear, you can't even buy a vehicle with these low wages. I think I was looking at, um, 
what do you call it, Toyotas, like a Toyota Corolla, like the most basic entry level car that you can get, and guess how much it was? $30,000. Like that's almost, that's comparable to own how much you would pay to buy a house. Like vehicles are um, uh, unaffordable. Yet, when I look on LinkedIn, like, a lot of these jobs require you to own your own vehicle. Like, these horrible jobs, especially the ones that require you to put your vehicle on the line. Like, a lot of these gig jobs, these delivery jobs, these dog walking jobs, even these, um, these door-to-door -door salesman jobs, they require you to use your vehicle in a way where it's highly likely that it's going to get damaged, right? Like, for example, if you're walking a dog, your dog is going to, st I, I'm sorry, your car is going to smell like dog ass, right? And if you're um, doing Uber or, or whatever, like, I've heard these horror stories where, especially these, like, women after uh, leaving clubs, they throw up all over your vehicle, and you have to spend your own money to clean them. Like, Uber doesn't take any responsibility um, when it comes to damages to your vehicle. Right? The thing that all of these jobs have in common is that they expect you to have things that require you to have an adult wage. Yet these jobs only are willing to pay you a baby wage that can't even buy you the things that you need to um, conduct the, the job that you're looking for, right? And I mean, overall, jobs require you to own your vehicle to commute, right? Like, public transport is so unreliable in this country that you have to spend that $30,000 just to just to get from point A to point B, right? And this kind of dovetails into my first point. A lot of guys, or a lot of quote-unquote R-pill guys seem to shame young men for not moving out and making it out on their own, right? Which doesn't make any sense because look at the, the rise of rent. Look at the price of housing. Let's just pretend someone working minimum wage, I mean, those are the only jobs that seem to be available these days, working minimum wage tries to live on their own. Like, they're either going to be homeless since they can't afford housing on their own, or they're living with 10 other people, or they're living with a significant other. And think about um, the average ugly guy. Like, he probably doesn't have any friends to move in with, um, obviously he doesn't have a significant other, so, I mean, what options does he have? There you go, you're, you're stuck with your parents, because that's the only thing you can afford to do. That's why I don't get, I, I get why, um, a lot of these scammers want to shame men, because they want them to buy their, their book, or their, their scam course, or whatever they're trying to sell, but, um, like, that's pretty much the only option for, guys who don't have the connections, right? If if you're the guy who just graduated and is working at um, a guitar store like my friend is, um, online friend is, there is, there aren't any options as far as moving out is concerned. I mean, it's a lot easier for women to move out since um, they don't have to be reliant on their parents. It's like if you're, even if you're um, an ugly woman, you still have the option to move in with a beta bucks, right? There's always a guy out there that will pay for the lifestyle of um, the average woman, right? Or even a below average woman. And, you know, this is the quote-unquote new normal. Like, most of us guys are going to be working minimum wage jobs despite having a lot of experience and a lot of education. It really doesn't matter, um what qualifications you have if you don't have the connections. Again, um, I, I mentioned that other person again, the, the guy who got a useless psychology degree and had no work experience on top of that degree, yet he was able to get a, a middle-class white-collar role. Like, what's the point in having three jobs, three minimum wage jobs, if all that is going to get you is, and if you're working, like, what, 80 hours a week, and the only thing that gets you is um, food and shelter, right? You're not moving anywhere. You're not, you're not progressing in any way in life. You're never going to own a home. So what's the point in working? Like it's, it makes a lot more sense just to live with your parents at that point, right? And it's, I think it's completely unfair that a lot of these boomers argue that 
oh, we gotta, we gotta practice tough love and kick our sons out of the house, not our daughters, our sons out of the house, since they're the least likely to be able to survive on their own, right? There is no beta bucks out there ready to save our asses. Um, there is only poverty and homelessness. That's why I think that 90% of homeless people are males. Like, you, you hardly see any homeless women. Like, when you, when you just go, when you go outside, all you see are homeless men. It's kind of the same way that, um, you see WMAF couples, right? You never see an Asian guy with a white woman. You always see a white guy with an Asian woman. It's just as common. And, and you know, another fun fact I want to mention is that I think homeless people live, they die 25 years earlier than their housed counterparts. So what do you think that says about homelessness? Like you're basically just signing your, um, you're just signing a death wish at that point, right? just due to the sheer level of mortality for homeless people. And this kind of goes into my second point. There are no jobs that pay a living wage, or at least no one's hiring for jobs that pay a living wage. All the jobs that are available, the 8 million open jobs that are available are all shady jobs that pay next to nothing, right? Like I applied to hundreds of jobs over this past month and the only two the two offers that I got was one at this really shady MLM scheme where they kind of made it look like it was a salaried position um, an office role with a salaried position but I learned very quickly that this was a door-to-door -door MLM scam right and the second um, offer that I got was with this crappy sandwich shop so I would be working next to high school dropouts right and the thing was um with the MLM scheme the the contestants that I was competing with were actually quote-unquote good right the first round of interviews was me and this middle-aged former business analyst right and his English wasn't the best and I mean he was bald and ugly to boot right he was middle-aged and ugly and had a bald head a norwood reaper stole his hair a long time ago so i mean based on what they actually knew the job was about like he wasn't the best fit right like you're not going to buy internet from a middle-aged bald man who could barely speak english and the second round of interviews was me and um some college graduate Right? I'm a college graduate as well, so it was me and another college graduate. But he, he went to a good school, right? I went to a good school as well. So it just seems that these scams are trying to fill these crappy roles with as many young college-educated people as possible. right? And they revealed that this wasn't even an hourly role. They, there was no base pay, and they were only paying the employees per commission. So you could be wait, you could be working for eight hours for every day for like a week and still be earning zero dollars and zero cents. You know, I know how these meat grinder jobs are like. I remember going to like I think last year I got an offer for this really, really crappy door to door canvassing job where you were asking people to give you money so that you could give it to this quote unquote non profit. And I mean I saw so many parallels between that non-profit job and this job selling internet door-to-door, -door, right? The first thing that I noticed was the fact that they kept calling me, right? They seemed desperate for people to take this role. And when I, I, I mean, they kept calling me, so I was like, fine, fine, I'll hear you out, right? And after going through the first and second interviews, the first, the second thing I noticed was the fact that this interview room was packed with people there was like 10 people in this small room and they were calling in us calling us in uh in pairs right and i mean obviously that was the time when i um was competing against that other college student and it was sort of the same thing with the, the job with the nonprofit, right they just crowded us into this rally room where they just talked about what we were going to do at, in the job, which is kind of weird, right? Like with the door-to-door -door internet salesman position, they 
um, talked about it as if it was an office role where he would be taking calls and um, doing some clerical work. Yet, like, in the second interview, quote-unquote interview, they revealed what you were actually going to do, which is going from door to door in this 200 degree weather. And, you know, I could tell that the turnover for this company was over 100%, just based on the fact that there were just so many people that they were trying to interview. And, you know, like, I'm further convinced that the job was a scam since they called me again this morning um and they wanted me to come in on monday for um some kind of orientation so yeah it really doesn't matter what your qualifications are because like if you do get a job they typically train you for it you could literally have an underwater basket weaving degree and if that is the only requirement for a job, if only, if having a degree is the minimum requirement for a job, and daddy has a position ready and open for you, you're going to get it, right? And you're just going to be trained for that position once you do receive your um your offer, right? If you're like a guy like me, where, where their parents have such a low opinion of their son, to where they won't even offer them a job as a secretary, even though a lot of my internships were secretary-like positions, then you're just going to be in a situation where you're waiting, what, six years until you're, you're able to get an entry-level job, until someone gives you the chance to start your career, right? Otherwise, you're just going to be stuck in this loop of working in retail and or working at the Taco Bell or working at the Jiffy Lube, right? You're just going to make these lateral moves until someone gives you a chance. Meanwhile, your degree is getting less and less valuable as it gets older and older, and your internships get less valuable as they get pushed further back in your work history. And if any of you guys are in college right now, that's probably going to be the majority of us. We're going to end up working at these shitty jobs until someone gives you the chance, gives you a chance, right? And the likeliness of you, and especially for like a sub five guys, like the likeliness of you breaking into an industry are very low. And the crazy thing is a lot of boomers still believe that if you do get um, a college degree, it's enough for you to receive a living wage, right? But at this point, the only jobs that are available to us are restaurant, retail, and warehouse, or anything involving touching food. And if you're good looking enough, you might, or if you're attractive enough in any way, you might be um, given a chance to enter a more lucrative industry, but most of us are going to be stuck in that bottom tier of work that no one wants, right? I mean, at this point, it's pretty obvious that I'll be spending the next few years of my life it will always be hourly. I will be extremely disposable, and um, I'm going to be spending six plus years in these shitty jobs until maybe I get a chance to get myself out of this situation. But even I mean that's unlikely as well. I'll end up like millennial steam, where I spend the majority of my adult life working these crappy jobs.